Good evening. We will finalize with the press conference of Australia head coach Tony Gustafsson. First of all, I would like to ask uh, the coach, what are your reflections on this incredible night here in Brisbane? A lot of emotions, of course. Um, I said to the I said to the team before the game um, that it's not about the medal around your neck. It's about the heart beating on the backside of it, um, meaning it's about heart um, and. The amount of heart and soul and passion that this team showed tonight is, there's different ways of uh, defining success. But for me, uh, success is when you leave it all out there, no matter the result. You play with your heart um, and give it your best uh, with the crest on your chest. And the players tonight, they represent so much more than 90 minute football. Um, all 224 alumni work with us out there. Uh, all the little kids that this team want to inspire, uh, the next generation. Uh, and then seeing a nation unite, the way we were sent off at the hotel today, going to the stadium, the support we got. When we arrived to the stadium, the support we got. During the game, the support we got. Um, how everyone have united around these players. Um, I'm probably one of the, the proudest and happiest coach ever right now because I'm so happy for so many other people. Thank you. Um, now we will take questions from the floor. Please raise your hand, state your name and media organization before asking a question. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't matter what the question is, Tony. Just talk more because, I mean... <laughs> I, I always talk I too much, all, too, too fast, all. and my swing is not the best either. So. <laughs> I think we're all punch drunk as well, you know, because being there for that penalty shootout, like, the pressure was just phenomenal. The entire game was phenomenal, but that penalty shootout, and can you explain that roller coaster? and what were the immediate reactions from the players afterwards? Well, I can start with the circle up going into the PK shootout. Um, I think you know me by now that I like to prepare. Um, I said to the players, I just looked them in the eyes and said, trust me when I say you're prepared for this moment. Because I've been around the big tournaments before and I know the limited time you have to prepare and I know how much investment we've done to prepare for a PK shootout. Um, technically, tactically, mentally, physically, all aspects of a PK shootout, even how we circle up before the, the shootout, how they stand in the circle, how they walk up, the pre-shot routine, uh, trust the preparation. And, and that's all we spoke about. said, you're ready. Let's show the world that we're ready as well um, and then during the PK shootout I think it was an emotional roller coaster for all of us um, you know and it was almost like it was written in the stars when Maka walks up and take that fifth one right she saves one and then you know it's meant to be kind of thing that's how you feel and then she hits the post right and then you go okay maybe it wasn't meant and then you go through all those emotions and then you, Claire Hunt comes up and say maybe it's that debutant the World Cup debutant maybe it's her turn maybe maybe that's what written in the stars or maybe that's what meant to be um, and then it come down to 10 PKs and, and wine steps off a game changer we know how important that is um, young player World Cup debutant and stay as composed as she does uh, but I also have to mention as you probably all know from Mecca missing that PK and stay in the game and be that person or that player that wins the game for us I've, it's un unheard of, unseen of. I mean, that mental strength of hers is just... And then I have to credit Tony Franking, my goalkeeper coach. Oh, my God, how much he meant in preparation and, and how they've done it together. And I don't know if you saw it, but the goalkeepers and him stand next to each other in technical area, coaching Mecca through the PK shootout as well. So the team in the team that Tony have created with Batig and Lydia and Mecca is, is just amazing. So really happy for that. Our equalizer soccer. Tony, I was wondering what were your thoughts when France made the substitution with their goalkeeper? Did you have any different advice for your players going into the goalie, just going into the game? And were you maybe expecting that sort of move? I know it, it caused a lot of confusion for fans and media and whatnot. I think the fact that we've seen it uh, in our own house, so to speak, the Socceroos did it in the World Cup, we know that uh, that could be thrown at you. Um, and these players have shown that no matter what curveball is thrown at them, they're ready to to hit it anyway. Uh, and I don't think it affect them at all because they are prepared to stay true and loyal to their own preparation. So no matter what goal is in goal, they had the routine, they had the preparation and knew exactly what to do. Hi, Tony. Laura Spurway from Channel 7. Congratulations. 
I'd just like to know, you know, obviously a semi-final is a best ever result for a Matildas at a World Cup, which is an incredible achievement. Short turnaround now. So how do you utilise that to your advantage? Obviously, I'm not 100% sure who your opponent is yet, but what do you do in the next few days to kind of come back down from this? Because it is an historic night. I think the number one is to embrace this historic night uh, and feel that, you know, that we are united. I said in the circle, you know me, I've kept the circle pretty tight during this tournament um, in terms of looking in and focus on us and say, so let's bring the families into circle tonight. Let's bring the fans in. Let's bring the nation in and, and actually embrace and enjoy this moment because that is part of a mental recovery. So actually allow yourself to to feel those celebration and those emotions tonight. Um, I'm really happy for the players that they're going to see their loved ones tonight because we'll bring the families to the hotel so that they can connect. They sacrifice a lot and it's a way a lot from the families to, to be able to do that together as part of the that preparation for the next game. Then sleep and recovery is key. Uh, I mean, it's a massive amount of physical output uh, from the game today from a lot of players. So it's, recovery is key. What's good is that we have continuity in what we're doing, we have a clear playing style, so we don't really need to train to be tactically prepared, it's more about making sure we're mentally and physically prepared for the semi-final coming up uh, but these players are on a mission, uh, I know that, uh, they're going to celebrate this one but from tomorrow they're going to be focused again, they're extremely professional and they're on a mission Hi, Tamara Griffin with uh, The Athletic it feels already like the the game that we watched in regulation was like five years ago after everything that passed. <laughs> um, but I'm wondering if you can talk about that part because it was incredibly intense. A lot of people have been saying it's been the most exciting match they've seen so far this World Cup. Um, what did it look like to you from the sidelines? Uh, I'm, I'm happy that people enjoy the game because um, this is also uh, about entertaining. And I think this is two team that is attacking minded that has individual brilliance uh, that shines through. Um, it's a really tough battle out there, two physical team. Uh, the intensity is, is extreme in a game like this. Um, but you can also see, and that happens especially in, uh, in tournament football in playoffs, that the momentum goes up and down for the different teams. We had periods in the game that I actually think we dominated. And I mean that, I actually think we dominated parts of the game. Um, had two, three sitters that we definitely could have scored on. But I also think France have moments in this game where they completely dominated and we could not get out of our own third. Uh, what I was really proud of during that time is is how our back line and Maka defended our, our goal zone. Because I don't know how many crosses we got against us tonight, but oh, they were flying crosses into the goal zone and, and the amount of times we had to clear them and block shots and, you know, that's tournament football, find a way to win. Uh, but it was a very, very entertaining game of football. Hey, Tony, Marco from uh, News Corp. With Kai Simon, like, you know, you'd said in the about um, one of the reasons she was in the squad was to maybe come on for a shootout and she was, like, warming up. What made you not sort of bring her on at the end? She was ready to come on for a PK. Uh, she's trained for it. Um, but as you know, she's been on an individual plan. Uh, it's been limited training time for her, even when it comes to PKs, but she's definitely ready. Um, I think in a game like this, if, if you were in my head with all the thoughts about decision-making or non-decision, um, it's tough. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. Uh, we had her on the on the side in the technical area, as you saw, being ready to come on. Same with, with Claire Polkinghorn. Uh, there's a lot of players sitting on that bench that is ready to come on. Uh, what you plan for in a moment like this, and you saw how, how it went like this the last three, four minutes. We, didn't, we weren't certain about extra time until the very last minute of that extra time. It was four additional minutes. Um, and we then wanted to make some, some key decision. If they score, what do we do to score? If we score, how can we close out a game? Because it can happen in a matter of a second. Um, and because it was so tight and Kaya have limited playing minutes, I wanted to wait for the very last second if I brought her on. And I didn't find that that break to bring her on was the right one. And also with the team I had on the park, I felt I wanted to trust 11 on the park this time. Megan Lintman with Fox Sports. Um, just speaking to Mary's performance tonight, it felt like she had so many shots, so many opportunities that were just all blocked. But how does she, as such a young player, you know, stick in there and, and keep going and then, of course, you know, nail her PK? 
she plays beyond her years in terms of maturity. Um, she understands her defending role. Uh, she can spin on a dime with her technique. Uh, talking about entertainment, by the way, her technical skills is just one of a kind. Um, she could have a couple of goals tonight, I think. Um, next game, she scored two in a game like this. But just the fact that she creates these chances and she's involved in so much in our attack. Um, Mary has a, a bright future, but I also think we need to be very careful on putting too much pressure on her now. She's a young player. She should just play freely, do her thing, and, and yes, be Mary Fowler to 100%. And I think we all love it when she is. Uh, hi, Tony. Vince Regari, Sydney Morning Herald. Um, this tournament has been unbelievable for Australia. It feels like the team and yourself have gone through a lifetime full of challenges <laughs> in like two or three weeks. Having got done all of these things and won in so many different ways, in ways that people think you couldn't, and in ways like tonight, which just defy all belief, does it feel like this team can do pretty much anything from here on? Yeah, I, I'm I'm going to be honest. I think my belief that this team can do anything have been there even before tonight. Uh, and it sounds maybe silly to sit here and say it after a win, right? But I think you've all heard me say it so many times. And and I genuinely really believe that this team can do um, great history in so many ways, not just winning football games, but the way that they can inspire the next generation, how they can unite a nation, how they can leave a legacy that is much bigger than 90-minute football. And I think that why is also why I believe in them so much. Because the why is so much bigger than just football. And when that drives you and that internal drive as a human being, whether it's an individual or a group, um, that is a powerful tool that can it's very difficult to stop and I've sensed that from day one working with this team uh, the inner drive and the why is what gets them to where they are today uh, Emma Camp Sydney Morning Herald Tony congratulations again um, a match like this it must be a nightmare to manage um, you had your earpiece in and you had your iPad out just wondering like how how many of those sort of eyes in the sky were on hand today and and were there any kind of big moments during the match where they really came into play and they really helped you make like a tactical decision Definitely. Uh, I credit my eye in the sky. I have my assistant and my analyst up in the stand helping me see things. As you know, it's very difficult as a coach when you're at ground level to see things clearly. Uh, we practice scenarios before the game as a coaching staff. We sit in what we call the war room and go through different scenarios. And so we're less emotional when we make decisions because in the game you get very emotional, <laughs> like tonight. Um, so they helped a lot. Uh, I think the biggest decision, to be honest, was uh, when to bring Sam in. Uh, it was a massive decision even before the game to leave her on the bench. Um, and then it's the timing. You want the timing right. Um, I was informed that she had limited minutes for today. And then we need to put extra time into consideration. So it was not just getting in half time for 45, because then maybe another 30. So what's the risk that she pulls the calf and how many minutes does she actually have? That was a massive decision to get that right. I think we got it right and we should have scored doing that because we really got the moment like we got it right we had them but then when sam came in, we really had them uh, on the hook so to speak like we really got the momentum and from the fans as well and, and we were very very close to score two goals in that period and then that came calm down a little bit and i think france got the momentum back um that was one very very big decision the other one was uh, vine we know with her pace that she can really hurt team when they start to get tired. But at the same time, the right side coming in, she with Ellie and, and Rasa was really, really good to close down Fran's left side. So it was the timing of when do we take Rasa off. She scored goals in the tournament, one chance, maybe she scores again. But then Rasa started to fatigue, and it's that moment, when do you, when do you take her off? Those two, I think, were the biggest tactical decisions tonight. We have time for the last two questions. One... Yes, to the lady over there. Hi, Tony. Congratulations. Anna Harrington, AAP. Um, sort of ties into what you just said about um, Sam Kerr and Courtney Vine. One, just your reflections on Sam, the way she came on, and also to bury that penalty after one had just been saved. And, of course, Courtney Vine scored the winner, a, a young player, and she just told us before that she got put down as the 10th player. So, obviously, that's worked. It, just those two players you could talk through. Um, Sam was very, very energetic when she came in. I think she was very excited herself. You can see all the runs. Uh, maybe the, the moment and, and, and that 
energy um, also made her run a lot because <laughs> you know you know how the moment get you really want to go in and impact the game, which it did. But then also you could see a little bit of fatigue uh, throughout the game, which is natural. She hasn't been able to train continuity with with intensity for a while. Just the fact that she could push through uh, and then step up um, as a captain, especially after the vice captain missed that PK before as well. She just steps up and, and buries it. It's just classic Sam Kerr moment, I think, how she, she carries the team on her shoulders. Uh, when it comes to Vine, every single player had practiced their PK routine, um, but she was actually close to win the game for us even before that. Her diagonal run when Caitlin plays her in, and that's exactly why we brought her in, uh, to make sure she can use the speed getting in behind that back line that started to get tired. She could be in a, a game changer that won the game for us even before the PK. Then imagine standing there in the center circle as a World Cup debutant, um, and you're listed as the 10th taker out of 11, and it goes to that. And then she just walks up and buried that PK. With, and if you look at it by the language, it looks like it was, she wasn't even disturbed by the moment. Yeah, she just walks up and buries it. It's just, yeah, a very, very impressive moment. Uh, but also, what you can do with preparation. Because when you prepare, um, you are confident. The last one, yeah. You? No, N not anymore? Okay, over here. Over here then. <laughs> last one. Um, Tony, semi final coming up on Wednesday. This is arguably one of the biggest weeks in Australian football history. How do you feel to have that responsibility and that you've got this far with the team and, and you know, inspired the country like you have over the last couple of weeks? I love it. Um, we've shown that we thrive under pressure uh, over and over and over again in this tournament. And I've said it before, I think I have some unhealthy addiction to do and die games and these type of moments. Um, I love it. It makes you feel alive. Um, and I just said to my staff, I brought them together before I went walking in here and said, this is what life is about, creating memories with the ones you love the most. Uh, and to be able to do that tonight with this team has been amazing. And um, I can't wait to, to get more moments like this with this group of amazing people. There's one last one over here. I can ask it through the tears. Uh, Sam Laws from the ABC. Tony, this game feels like the accumulation of so much of what you've all been through over the last three years. Have you had a moment to take a step back and sort of see the way that this encapsulates all of those challenges, all the doubt, all of the people who didn't believe you when it was hard? You make me tear up now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Um, Obviously difficult when you're emotional now to distance yourself and see it that way. But I think that's why I teared up a lot uh, on the field after the game. Because um, I know how much this means for so many people. And when you want to achieve something great and when the why is bigger than 90 minute football and bigger than sport, um, to then see how all the hard work that not just these players, we need to remember that all the hard work that all of you and all of the, the alumni, all of the, the brave women that walked this path way, way before my time. And I'm just a small part of this and then see that how it comes together. And, and yeah, now extremely proud. It's difficult to, to put in words now, but I'm just so happy for so many other people than myself right now. And that's why I tear up because I know how much it means for so many.